remember uh, what a fellowship? There you go. We're going to try to go with them O's. All right, everyone stand. We go to God in prayer. We're going to start off with this song. And I'll try to see if I can remember the words. I think I do. Yeah, you do. All right, here we go. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting on. What a blessedness, what a peace in mind leaning on the everlasting on. Well, I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting will I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Father in heaven, we want to thank you once again for allowing us to be here this evening to open up your word. And we pray that you open up your word to us, Father God, give us understanding. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place once again to reveal and to uh, show us what you would have us to learn from these lessons that we're learning this evening, Father God. We thank you for the Bible study that's continuing to go, and we thank you for all those that are able to make it here this evening. Thank you for traveling grace, Father God. But those that are still making it this way, we're praying for traveling grace for them as well. Father God, And we ask that you let your word go forth, Master. We thank you for Pastor Wesley, who's uh, continuing each week. Uh, to uh, have us on social media, Father God, to put your word out, Master. And we are just praying that it reaches, Father God, it reaches to the farthest places, Father God, to the highways and byways, Master. We just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be able to use this social media, Father God. And once again, we thank you again for this night, for this Bible study. We give you honor, glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's church say amen. 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 Well, we're going to go ahead and get started with 1 Kings. We're moving right along. 1 Kings chapter 22. And this is a rather lengthy chapter. We'll hopefully can get through it. It's like 53 verses. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, you're just going to listen. But I guarantee the Holy Spirit's going to move on you to say something. As he always does. We're going to all have something to say this evening. Because there's a lot that's about to happen here. Because guess what? Guess what, y'all? It's going to talk about prophets. Also, it's going to talk about prophets. So we're going to go ahead and jump on into it. I'm going to go this, um, once again, it's 1 Kings chapter 22. And I'm going to start off with verses 1 through 9. And um, the title that I have here it says, Micaiah's Prophecy, Micaiah's True Prophecy. Uh, the other title from the NIV says, Micaiah Prophesies Against Ahab. And then from the NLT, New Living Translation, which is what I'll be reading from this evening. It says, Jehoshaphat and Ahab. Amen. Jehoshaphat and Ahab. We're talking about two different kings here. All right, verse 1. It says, For three years there was no war between Aram and Israel. Then during the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah went to visit King Ahab of Israel. During the visit, the king of Israel said to his officials, Do you realize that the town of Ramoth Gilead belongs to us? And yet we've done nothing to recapture it from the king of Aram. Mm -hmm. Then he turned to Jehoshaphat and asked, Will you join me in battle to recover Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, Why, of course, you and I are as one. My troops are your troops, and my horses are your horses. Then Jehoshaphat added, But first, let's find out what the Lord says. Oh, man. Oh, what an, what an idea. So the king of Israel summoned the prophets, about 400 of them, and asked them, Should I go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or should I hold back? They all replied, Yes, go right ahead. The Lord will give the king victory. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not also a prophet of the Lord here? 
we should ask him the same question. The king of Israel replied to Jehoshaphat, There is one more man who could consult the Lord for us, but I hate him. He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. His name is Micaiah, son of Imlah. Jehoshaphat replied, That's not the way a king should talk. Let's hear what he has to say. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Quick, bring Micaiah, son of Imlah. Ooh, boy, interesting. So we have two different kings, one from Israel, one from Judah. The two different, the northern and the southern and the northern tribes. You all know about the ten tribes to the north, the two to the south, and how it was divided. Uh, the kings of Israel, the northern kingdom, were more wicked. And so they're going to be the ones that experience more um, consequences from the Lord, and earlier consequences from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Judah had a few wicked kings, but they had more good kings than wicked kings. Mm -hmm. But they also are going to fall short, and they're going to also suffer consequences. Mm -hmm. But right now, so we, we see that they want to go, go to war and try to get Aram. Uh, Aram is in the area of the land that they, they have. Ramoth Gilead is the land they're supposed to have, but they have to go and get that land. Mm -hmm. And so the king of uh, Jehoshaphat is saying, well, Ahab is saying, can we just go in and fight and get that land back? And so he said, well, let's ask the prophets. Now, which, which king said, let's ask the, the uh, prophets? Yeah. Okay, it says, let me read it again. Do you realize that the town of Ramoth Gilead belongs to us? And yet we have done nothing to recapture it from King Aram. Then he turned to Jehoshaphat and asked, will you join me in battle to re recover Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, why, of course. You and I are one, my troops are your troops, and my horses are your horses. Then Jehoshaphat added, but first let's find out what the Lord says. Isn't that amazing that the king from the south that had the more good kings would be the one to say, let's consult the Lord. But the king from the north with all the wicked ones would say, no, let's just go ahead and fight. He wasn't even thinking about asking uh, what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And then uh, just looking down... Now, they were going to ask, so they did. They asked the prophets. But these prophets said, yeah, let's just go, let's go, let's go. But then Jehoshaphat says, no, let's ask another prophet. Let's ask, do we have any prophets from the Lord? Mm -hmm. Y'all, we have a lot of prophets out here. We have a lot of wicked prophets uh, that are false prophets and that are saying a lot of different things. we got to make sure that we are hearing from the prophet mm -hmm. that's sent by the Lord. We have prophets and prophetesses that are from the Lord, and they will give us messages. So we have to make sure that we are praying that we are hearing from hearing from prophets that are from the Lord. Because as you see here, there were a bunch of us, 400 prophets, but none of them were from the Lord. That's right. Amen. So, so now they ask, and they're going to find out they have one prophet that's a prophet from the Lord. And he is going to be a bold prophet. He's gonna he's not gonna bend down, he's not gonna just follow along what everyone else says. Mm -hmm. He's gonna say what thus said the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. You know what I like that uh was saying too, it was something my new but at the same time it was profound and it was powerful when he when uh, Jehoshaphat said to Ahab, you know, let's not talk like that. To me what I said was well, let's not let's let's use integrity. Now we kings, we sit on the throne, we outside the gate of you know we sit here trying to get mm -hmm. together about something going on. So let's be uh let's be mindful of our words that we use yes. if we are kings. Yes. I like that. It shows a form of integrity. That you know, showed. Let's not be talking out crazy. Remember how sometimes we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, we at work and we amongst uh, all the others. You talk about it a lot, uh, Pastor. Mm -hmm. About we amongst all of the naysayers. And, you know, yes. it's almost good to just walk away from the naysayers who talking about the boss. You know, it's, it's about integrity. Yeah. And that's one that's very hard for us to do because I know one, sometimes I fall short when I have a leader that's not uh, a good leader. You know, mm -hmm. but at the same time, even though it's not a good leader, it's best to keep your heart closed best versus mm -hmm. speaking against them. It's best to pray versus just speaking negative about it. But I just saw a form of integrity when Jehovah said, hey, let's not say that. In my Bible, it says, it says let's not, let not the king say such things. Jerry said something different than you in those here, right? I have the new King James Version. It says that Jehovah has said, let's not, let not the king Say yeah, such that's from New King James. It says, "Let not the king say yeah. such things." Yeah, so that was yes. a form of integrity. Let's not like you know, let's come together on. And then the NIV says, "The king should not say such a thing." Exactly. But 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 what you just said though is very important because leaders should watch the way that they are speaking exactly. too. And these are kings, and they are, are kings over nations. And so when you have a king that's over a nation or a ruler over a nation, they should speak uh, in the manner that a king should speak. 
And they should speak if they're godly kings. They should speak the man that God would have them to speak. So I, that was very important what you said there. Because we have some leaders that don't speak the way that they should speak. And they, they're not speaking the way that God would have them to speak either. Mm -hmm. Our last president. Yeah, that's right. There are a few of them. There's a few of them. She took the words out of my mouth. Yes, yes. That's what you're going to say? Yeah. Okay. But well, I want to add to that too. She said our last president. I was going to call his name. But Pastor Wright is more than one, not just him. There's quite a few of them. We got a governor. We got a few of them that don't really uh, speak on behalf or don't say things. This is what the Lord says. None of them really say that now. You know, you don't really find too many leaders that will go back and say, this is what the Lord says. They'll say, God bless America, God bless this country, and God bless the United States of America. But other than that, they don't really say much of anything else that would be of God. Go ahead. And what I'm going to say, not only Trump, but a lot of leaders that people that's in office and in pastors and church always speaking negative about other people. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what you said. What he said, yeah, well, the king, we ought not to be, you, know, you ought not to be talking like that. Mm -hmm. Same thing, they ought not to be talking like that. Their concern should be for the people, not what this other guy is doing or what he's saying and all this here. Mm -hmm. But saying it's something positive for the people. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at this here, these two, these two kings, and I, as I was looking at these two kings, one uh, uh, from the north, one from the south, and you look at people today, Ahab wants to do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. he, he just wanted to show that, he, you know, because uh, uh, the host of that say, well, let, let's ask the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. So he said, well, well, you know, let's get a, you know, a, man, of, a man of God, and so he can seek the Lord. Well, okay, we're going to get these people. That's when sometimes you ask people, to, okay, well, we'll do this. Let's go ask this person, ask that person. Mm -hmm. what they got to say. Because they know these persons are going to say what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And that's what they have. He know these prophets, these prophets, who, like you said, wasn't faithful, were going to say what they have wanted that's to, right. wanted to what say. He wanted to what he wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. Well, that's why he didn't like, like Malachi. Mm -hmm. Because Malachi is going to tell him exactly the truth. Some people don't like for you to tell them the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Yeah. You can't stand the truth. Yeah, they don't yeah, want to hear the truth. But then again, some people tell the truth, but they tell the truth at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. You know, they tell it. They tell the truth, but they tell it with with malice or to make fun or to hurt. Mm -hmm. They don't tell it to help. They tell it to put down. And but they also you know, have their own motives too. They have hidden motives and hidden right. agendas to well, try to right. get their own agendas filled or right. you know oh, passed. So much of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of it. And I was just bringing up the government also how they uh, they want to get their bill across or whatever yeah. they want to do and they'll agree with you they'll do certain things just so I can get what I want yeah you know what I'm saying so they, they manipulate and they do our country a disservice when they do that because they're still their own personal philosophies or how things should be or their own personal agenda or what they can gain from it or what their businesses or their lobbyists you know I told y'all mm -hmm. last week a lobbyist are those business people that put people in the office uh, uh, political office so they can get something out of it. You know, they'll spend money, they'll do all kinds of things and give donations just to get that person in office so that person can do something for my business and my business can grow, not to help anything else. Well, let, let's bring it back to the churches. they got some churches right now. Some, some ministers say, well, well, I'm going to come to your church and I'm going to bring my people and then they say, you bring your people to my church. Mm -hmm. If you don't bring your people to my church, then I ain't bringing my people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, do in order to get what, you know, what they want. Mm -hmm. Manipulate. Yes. Instead of just just uniting, as God said, unite, help wow. one another, you know, regardless. Boy, we back where we were last week with manipulation. Isn't that what yeah. Sister Rhonda brought up, one of the words? Yeah. Manipulating with uh, uh, Ahab and Jezebel, manipulating? Yeah. 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 See some more of that. Yeah. It's already coming up. I think sometimes, though, like the, the example you gave, sometimes even though we know that that's what they're doing, it still would be for the good to do it. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I would do it just because I believe that would be mm -hmm. the good, even though I know that the main goal is yeah. for them. Yeah. So I think you have to kind of look at it, you know, from, mm -hmm. well, you know, I know that's what he wants, but is that actually what would be the best? And yeah. if it's the best well, thing, it comes with do. discernment. It comes yeah. with discernment. discernment. You know, yeah. if, like, you know, like you just said, you know, he's trying to manipulate, you know, well, maybe, you know, this might be, you know, for the, for the better for the, for the whole For everybody. Thing. Yes. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. You know, and we are as Christians and we as people, our civic responsibility, and, you know, is to watch and see what these politici politicians are really saying. What is their real platform? You know, they'll say certain things, but then we have to really go into prayer and 
go and to study ourselves and look and see what they have. What, what all is a part of that bill? What are you trying to do? What's your platform? So a lot of times we just go with mama told me to vote for, so-and-so vote for. Well, no, we need to go and check ourselves and see what do they actually believe in? What are their philosophies? What are their beliefs? You know, yeah. That's our civic responsibility, but that's our Christian responsibility even more so. We have to really pray on this last bill that they haven't got through that they yes. do not get it through. Yes. There's so much stuff in it. That's you know, hidden in there. That's packaged in. There. One of the things they talk the trillion dollar deal. Uh, yeah, the one thing that's concerning me the most is they're going to tax methane gas, which is going to hurt the farmers and the cattle people. Mm -hmm. And they want to do away with the food and then start bringing it in from China what they make. And so they want to take away our ability to feed ourselves where we're dependent on them. Yes. So I think, you know, that's a huge one to me because that will change everything. They want us to be dependent. Dependent on the food source, mm -hmm. everything, if they, if they put all the ranchers out of business where we can't. And they stay in hamburger for to $10 a pound. Yes, I mean, yes. One pound of hamburger for $10, that's going to be insane. And then the regulations aren't as restrictive either. They, they can put anything in there. You know, they yeah, can do a lot got, of different things to it. Bit. That's the one I think that bothers me the mm -hmm. most is to take away our ability here to feed ourselves if we need to. To feed ourselves and still have those regulations. See, yeah. the FDA, they regulate. They look at that stuff to see what we're eating and what they're putting in the foods. We get we start getting it from anywhere else. You don't know what we'll be eating, you know? So we've got to be careful with that. Exactly. I told Wesley, and I don't even remember that I told you. I think, I don't know, it's five months or six months. Mm -hmm. The Lord showed me, you got full planting, plant like tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Tomato will dry up. Tomato, all the things will dry up with no water, just like in the deserts. Mm. Everything will dry up. That's what they showed me in the, in the drink. All the food that people planting, mm -hmm. what plant, when it look, it was dirt. Oh my goodness. With no food. Oh my goodness. So that come in. Mm -hmm. I don't know where. That's a famine. I was about to say that. That's I a famine. talking about a famine. This seems like long, some, you said that a long time ago, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, the Lord showed me. Yeah, I remember that. I yeah, the Lord showed, showed me. People, people were planting all these vegetables. I look around. With that with vegetable, it was just dirt. It was so dry. Mm -hmm. All the vegetable, everything was dry. So it won't be water problem and it won't be food problem. Yeah, I can see that happening. My boss from California said that they're running out of water. Mm -hmm. It won't be water problem, like I was just saying, because I seen it in my dream. The dirt dry, it won't be water problem, I won't be food problem. And I spoke that about what the Lord showed me. And I told my husband, if the Lord showed me, I will share it with me. Yeah, and we I can see that too. Because, you know, with the pollution, uh, it's a teacher, a science teacher, and they were doing a lesson and how pollution settles on the ground, but it settles in the water. And after a while, it gets so much pollution in the water that it becomes um, um, undrinkable. And that's what's starting to happen right now. Because they just had a... a volcano somewhere and the volcano was bad but then they were concerned that the lava was now going to the to the water mm -hmm. and the water was going to interact with that and cause other chemical issues and stuff like that and the water was going to be undrinkable and so and they, I can see that happen there's so many different ways that can happen but the Bible says that these things were going to happen anyway mm -hmm. I saw anyway I saw you know the I water mean. turning into blood well the Bible said it that way in the book of Revelation but that could mean that it's just showing that blood could be uh, a sign of just uh, contamination, or con a sign of death, fish, different uh, animals dying in the water, it's just a, that, a lot of different things. Yeah, Revelation mind. says a lot of things that's, that's going to happen, mind. and so we're not caught off by surprise. Right. And, and then, then you made a, a prophecy about something that's already here, just like Elijah made a prophecy about it not raining after it was already prophesied that it wasn't going to rain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, 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 when we have a prophecy, it's got to line up with God's word, and it lines up with God's word. Look, like I was telling you, I was sitting down in the living room, minding my own business. And the Lord showed me this little white boy. I couldn't see who the person was pushing the big boy. And I see the little boy, and I said, Lord, I don't know what is going on. The only thing I want is pray. Mm -hmm. So, only thing I can think, 
Only thing I can think after, I was thinking about what the Lord said about don't keep the children away from me. Bring yes. the children there from me. That's all I, that's all I could think. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what the reason. I was not sleeping, just in the living room, and all this hearing Christian stuff, all of a sudden I see this little boy. Now, I don't know exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you I know what it means. It's going to be revealed. It's going to be revealed. Say, don't keep the children away from me. No, I said that's what I oh. think is probably what it means. Because uh -huh. the, the, the Lord is saying, you know, like some people don't like their children to go to church or oh, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And and then look at what I now know with a lot of teenagers. Yeah. Mm. That's all I could think. But I don't know when we showed me that child. I don't know. But I was not sleeping in nothing. My Lord. Well, y'all, we're going to uh, continue to read. Um, we'll try to. Yeah. Jolene, you're here? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, back to uh, this. Um, I like what it says right here. What Jehoshaphat has said to the king of Israel. He said, I am as you are. My people as your oh, yeah, people. Oh, yeah, yeah. It reminded yeah, me when yeah. Naomi was talking to Ruth. When yes. Ruth was talking to Naomi. It yes. reminded yeah. me that I could just hear that. Yeah. And another mm -hmm. thing too, but but it's all I also heard a, 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 a pause from Jehoshaphat in my 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 spiritual mind where he said, "Yeah, all of that I'm, I'm saying all this to you, but we still going to talk to I'm still going to answer God first. And he was so humble. He said, "Please," according to my Bible, mm -hmm. he said, "Please inquire." And then I want to jump down here where it says that uh, when Jehoshaphat was uh, reminding Ahab of not speaking so harshly against the uh, the one prophet, the one uh, and. The one prophet that, um, okay. he had, the one he said there was one, it should be one in the city, that one. And I, from my understanding, he may have been in prison or somewhere and they, they called yeah. him in. Yeah. So anyway, what I'm saying is that it's amazing how when you have uh, these these two these two prophets and one of them is saying that, oh, I hate him. You know, and, and mm -hmm. it goes back, I like the way so far when we're reading all of it is applicable to today. Yes. Because mm -hmm. we're sitting here saying that, you know, you have a lot of people, they rush and pay a whole lot of money to go listen to a prosperity type prophet who's going to yeah. tell them nothing but good. But then when this prophet comes to tell you what does said the Lord, yes. when it's something evil, uh, not evil, when it's yeah. something not good, uh -huh. they don't want to hear that. Yes. Well, or when they've done something evil and God, God is saying to this prophet to tell them that yeah. my wrath should be upon them. They don't want to hear that. Nobody want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to hear something from a good prophet. And mm -hmm. see, that's, that's the situation with this uh, northern uh, Ahab king. Because he wants to hear just he the good wanna, stuff. He wants he wants to be food, spoon fed nothing but good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I'm saying? And sometimes that's a failure because everything about what we're doing is not good. We are not that's perfect. Good. We are unperfect people. So you know, if we are unperfect people, that there's going to be a prophet or person come to us and say, "Hey, nay, a dust said the Lord that's that right. this has to." And there are certain consequences to some of the actions. But I just like the fact that that was you know, good. That uh, Jehoshaphat said, "You know, don't say that because." You're sitting here, sitting here based it on you hate him because he's always saying something that you call evil. Oh, he doesn't like me. Yeah. He doesn't, and you know, it's a personal. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we be on our job, she don't like me. Well, no, she just don't like your, your standards of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of working, your your ethics of working. You 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 lack doing your job. It's not that it's something personal. They don't like you. It's they don't like your behavior. Mm -hmm. So that reminds me of Ahab. Mm -hmm. You know, Man. Like, hate's a really strong word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why he said that. Yes, you know, that's right. Mm -hmm. Don't speak like that. Don't say such a thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Mother V, you had your hand up? Yeah, like um long time ago. Long time, long time ago in San Antonio. The Lord spoke to me and tell me when I go to church to tell this person this. Mm -hmm. I went to the pastor then because I don't want to say uh, uh you know respect or whatever it is, right? I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I went and told him what the Lord has told me. I went and told the pastor what the Lord told me and his wife. Mm -hmm. And I say, I said to them, I told my husband first. I told him first. He said, go ahead and talk to the pastor and his wife. Because I want permission mm -hmm. to say it. So I told the pastor, and I told Wesley, and I told the pastor what I said. The Lord told me the girl, the girl, I don't name Sandra. The Lord showed me her and everything. I said the Lord told me. 
I don't know nothing about this home exactly. I said, the Lord told me she want to leave. She want to leave. And if she leave, that was it for her. Mm -hmm. So the pastor told me to tell her. But I really the day, my husband started preaching. But when a person kill himself, they don't go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So she was mad already with him. And they say, I go and tell her that she will be mad with me too. And you know something, Pastor? That girl left the home. Mm -hmm. wow. She told her, though. She told her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. told the girl her. left the home. I never knew she was going to leave. Because the Lord told me to tell her that was it for her. And she left the home. Mm -hmm. Because she was at home, in a home, getting, I think she was two years there for getting her life together. Mm -hmm. She left the home and she was overdosed and then found her dead. Oh, man. Wow. Sometimes I scare sometimes to tell people things. Mm -hmm. But when she tell me, honey, and the Lord tell you to do it, yes, do it. Do she it. Has to be obedient. Yes, do it. Do. I did, I mean, I did some, you know, the Lord used me in so much thing. And everything I tell them is came true. Amen. Elena, we, we're in the book of uh, 1 Kings chapter 22, and Mother um, Ophelia was just, um, we were talking about this, uh, the two kings, you have two kings here, you have uh, King Ahab, the wicked king, that's from the north, and we have King Jehoshaphat uh, of Judah from the south, and he's a pretty good king, and so uh, they want to find out about fighting this other country to take over this land that God had already promised them, and so... Uh, Ahab just said, let's go ask some prophets. Well, they did. They had some false prophets that just told Ahab what he wanted to hear. But then Jehoshaphat said, no, let's go find a prophet from the Lord. And then the prophet from the Lord is telling them what the Lord says. And so that's where we are right now. We're on verse 9. Yes. 1 uh, Kings chapter 22. Oh, 22. And we'll be at verse uh, 9. Okay. Verse 10.
for y'all, we're going to go verses 10. Uh, well, this is going to be a long one, 10 to 28, if anybody wants to try to read that long. Uh-huh. To, to when? To okay. 28. Okay, then. Yeah. Okay, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, I'm sorry, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, having put on their robes, sat each on his throne at the threshold, threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Now, Zedekiah, the son of Chenea, had made horns of iron for himself. And he said, Thus said the Lord, with these you shall bore the Samarians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied, so saying, Go up to Ramoth, Gilead, and, pro- and, proper, and, pro- and, pro- and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's, the king's hand. Mm-hmm. Then the messengers who had gone to call Micaiah mm-hmm. spoke to him, saying, Now listen, the words of the prophets would, with one accord and encourage the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak encouragement. And Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that that I will speak. Ooh, that's then it. he came to Yeah, I like that. <laughs> then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead? To or shall we refrain? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hands of the king. So the king said to him, How many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep had no shepherds. And the Lord said, Have then the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you? He would not prosper good concerning <laughs> He whined like a baby. Did I, I'm sorry. Did I did I not tell you he would not prosper good concerning me, but mm-hmm. evil? Mm-hmm. Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven oh, this is good. And all the hosts of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left on on, on his left. And the Lord said, Who would persuade, oh my goodness, who would persuade Ahab to go up that he may fail and rain more Gilead? Mm-hmm. So one spoke in this and one spoke in this manner, and the other spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I was persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all prophets. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. And the Lord has declared disaster against you. Stop right there, now, Dr. J. All right, this is a whole lot of stuff. I right, need to break this up. We need to break this up. All right, so we've seen a lot of the things that's happening right there in the natural realm, and then now we see what's really going on in the heavenly. That lets us know all these different issues that we're going through right now. We see the natural, but there's a lot going on in the heavenly. That we had to stop it right there. We we got we got we got to talk about this for a minute, y'all. Let, let's let's talk about this for a little bit. All right, let's see. Um, uh, okay. All right. Let's see. All right, so now they hear the prophets that are saying, they're telling uh, Ahab what they want, what Ahab wants them to, to tell him. And uh, it says, verse 12, all the other prophets agreed. Yes, they said, go up to Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. Verse 13, though. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, look, y'all listen to this here. Look. All the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. They're trying to get him to say what the rest of them are saying. Isn't that something? But this is what we're talking about, the boldness of this prophet. Verse 14, it says, but Micaiah replied, as surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what the Lord tells me to say. That's right. That is powerful there, y'all. That, that, that just That's almost like the peak part of this, this scripture right here. That's right there. It just showed you right there 
that we've got to stand bold. He's hearing from the Lord. I don't care what y'all saying. I'm not going to be a part of the group. I'm not going to just go on with the good old boy. Uh, you know, you, you hear about the good old boy, being part of the good old boy group. No, I'm not going to be a part of the good old boy group. That's what we have to do also. I'm not going to go along with everybody else. I'm going to go with what the Lord tells me to say. Amen. So that was just powerful. Go ahead, Dr. J. I like, I like Pastor Ray. It started off as uh, uh, verse 10 when it really started getting good. Pastor Ray, that says right there, you know how they put on their robe. They were at the, uh, the threshold floor at the entrance of the day of Samaria mm -hmm. and all the prophets. I mean, can you see them all at the gates and they got their robes on and they had court and they made these big old grand decisions. And then all of a sudden you got, uh, I mean, it's a lot of drama going on here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right, you know, right in the courts, you know, because that bed of, I mean, I see that in the courtroom and they're making all these decisions yes. about how what's going to go down. And then you have some of this, mur this uh, whispering about what we're going to say. And then the <laughs> tell saying, now, I ain't going there. I'm the messenger who coming with the truth. Yes. I know Yahweh. So I'm going to tell I'm going to speak the truth. Yahweh, mm -hmm. we said nothing but what, the, what thus said the Lord said. But it's, it's, it's amazing how people are so quick. To, to, to prevail in no good. Mm -hmm. You know, based on numbers. Let me say this also. Look how right here in verse 11 says, Now Zedekiah, son of Shanana, what a name, Shanana, had made horns of iron for himself. And he said, Thus says the Lord. This, this is what he's saying that the Lord is saying. Thus said the Lord, With these you shall go to the Syrians until they are destroyed. He's saying, what a lot of prophets, they, they come across, and the way he sounded, you get so many people, oh, he's saying a word from the Lord. The way he's saying it's a word from the Lord. No. No, that's the, just because they sound that way doesn't mean that it's coming from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what caught me, the way that he said it. Because we hear a lot of these prophets, and they you know how to come across, and they, they'll use a certain kind of exactly. uh, lingo, the way that they're speaking. And it's like, oh. Oh, thus said the Lord, my Lord, you know, and, and they come at you like that. But that doesn't mean that that's from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that that's from the Lord. So we got to be careful with all that stuff we see on the Internet. If they got all, they, Everybody's a prophet on the Internet. It seems like they got all kind of prophets. Yeah, we got to pray over that stuff, y'all. We got to pray over it. Go ahead. And you're right, Pastor, because it says, please let your words be like the words of one of them. And yes. And seek encouragement. So if you got people who will take... All this negative and mixed up that it sounds so good. And then they say, you know, people are mani manipulated and intimidated, intimidated into doing something that's really evil mm -hmm. because it, it, it's doubtful for something that looks good yes. or sounds good. Yes. You know, you throw one good word in there. The Lord told me to tell you. And that's the word. And all the rest of it. Ooh, we. The Lord told me to tell you, you know. Because they're not asleep. They're not scared. They're what? They're not scared from the Lord. They don't, they're not scared. They're not a, they don't fear the Lord. Yes. They'll go. They'll throw the Lord's name yes. around anyway because they and don't that, fear the that, Lord. That is very dangerous. That's a very, very dangerous important situation. point. Very good mm -hmm. point. Very good point. But well, uh, Doctor, go ahead and finish it all the way to twenty-eight. No, did anybody else want to say anything? Yeah, I want to say. Anything. What did you get? Go ahead. Yeah, because there's a lot to say when you get to nineteen. Go ahead. Nineteen is how the devil is The one problem we 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 missed when we what you, that you had read, Pastor, the section, the section that you had read. That Ahab, Ahab had said, you hated Malachi. There's one that I think you had kind of said it a little bit too. Mm -hmm. One that he had a problem with Malachi, he had a problem with God. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why you find people today when they don't like people of God or, or the things of God or don't want to hear it, they got a problem with God, not, yes. with, not with the individual, the, the person who bring it. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm jumping on down to uh, where you said, right, right here, where it says uh, 24. The last, that's the last one you read? Yes. Yeah. Read no, I don't think she read that yet. I just only read 23. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. 22. 22. When, when the, uh, the Lord said, uh, there, were, there, there were many suggestions. And finally, a spirit approached the Lord and said, <coughs> I can do it. I missed up now. Well, when the Lord said, you know, uh, what is that? Malachi continued. Listen to what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him and on, uh, around him, on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who can entice Ahab to go into battle against mm -hmm. Roman Galilee so he can be killed? There were many suggestions. And finally, a spirit, that's what I want, a spirit approach. Now, a spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how to say angels, but this was a spirit. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, lying spirit. The Spirit says, approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will you do it? The Lord asked. 
The Spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. And see, that's why we have to be careful uh, with our word, like he was saying. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, I would say, like, we as believers, the Spirit can't enter us. Mm -hmm. But it can entice us all. Yeah, by persuasion. Yeah, that's what Encourage right. your words. And have us to have, uh, tell a lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell us the presentation that. of it. Yeah, and that's why, and see, that's why I said we have to be careful. How, what, you know, we have to be listen. I think in the book of James says, "Speak less and listen and hear more." Yeah, uh, be yeah. swift to hear and slow yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is what we're doing. Is you find some people they they won't listen. Mm -hmm. Ahab won't listen because he want his way. Mm -hmm. He want to do things his way, and they, and they, like Ophir said, they have no these prophets had no fear of no God. Fear. No fear of God. So they're telling the air what he wanted to hear. What he wanted to hear. What he wanted to do. You know, just go ahead and do. You know, just what you want to do. You're going to have victory. The Lord said. A lion. Spirit of a lion. You know what? And then uh, it just it makes me think about Job also. Right at the beginning of Job. And they were, uh, uh, Satan was going to and fro. And, and he came to God. He came along with the heavenly host. He came up there with them. And uh, he said, God said, well, you know, he have you considered my, my servant Job? In other words, he was going to allow you, Joe, uh, devil, to do yeah. different things. Yeah. I'm going to let you do this. I'm going to yeah. allow you to do it. But you can't kill him, but you can do different things. So that lets you know in the spirit realm, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of uh, um, God uses Satan to do different things or allows yeah. Satan to do different things. He will allow him, but Satan has no power. He has the power, but he doesn't have, doesn't have the authority. He can only do what God tells him he can do. He's limited. He can't do anything that God cannot, won't allow him to do. So just like Job, he don't allow him to do so much. Just like this spirit right here, this lying spirit. Yeah, I'm going to let you do that. Go ahead and do what you're going to do to these evil prophets. They already messed up anyway. Go in there and put a lying spirit inside of them, you know. And this is basically what happened. Like you said, when you said, when you said Got to, you got to get permission. He has to get this line spirit had to get permission. He has no authority to, to go to and do a help. Same like in Job, he had to get, the devil had to get permission to go mm -hmm. and take Job. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, go ahead. No, Rhonda was asking why would he do that? Because God, there's there's a thing called just we talked about providence. Okay, there are certain things that God has in art. It's called divine providence. That this is going to happen. This kingdom is going to fall. This exactly. kingdom is going to. This is going to. But within all of that, God has, he manipulates, he allows different things to happen to get to that point. So he has the good people that God can use, you know, to, to try to do different things. But there are also evil people that God will allow to do some bad things for this here to come out, to, to come to pass. Mm -hmm. You got Judah, Judas. Judas had to be there because that was part of God's providence. Judas had to come and he had to deceive. That's what he was coming to do because God said it was going to happen. It was already part of God's providence. That lets us know in our lives, there's things in our lives God already knows what's going to happen. He's not caught by surprise. Like I said, always, we don't serve a God that goes oops. We don't serve a God that goes oops because he knows everything already. He knows the end from the beginning. So he allowed this lying spirit to come up and do this because it had to, this, everything that's fallen into place, it had to happen that way. So he had to allow this lying spirit to come and be a part of his plan. Okay. Basically. Okay. Yeah, right. the, what he's saying is true. Mm -hmm. Because one man
but you, Pastor, already said the part about Job. Yeah, it, it, I believe a, a fallen angel was because, it, again, in, in the Bible, you go to Revelation and you go to Job, but it shows where it talks about how the angels uh, come in the presence. I'm sorry, the, mm -hmm. the Satan. Satan comes, and when I say an angel, I'm thinking of the, yeah. the fallen angels, yeah. right? Yeah. The fallen angels and Satan, they were allowed to come through, through and fro, fro mm -hmm. like he said in Job. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, so those fallen angels, they were up there. They were saying, hey, you know, what am I? And, and like you said, God allows in order for, for and at the end of the day, it's going to all be good for the good of God. For his so, divine plan. Yeah, because he, mm -hmm. he's a sovereign God. He does what he want to do and how he want to do it in order to get to his purpose. And, and uh, what I wanted to say was, I believe the father, it was a fallen angel. One of those, one of Satan's, uh, you know, if they're saying, I won't tell him. You know, mm -hmm. a spirit. You know, a lying spirit. Because you he, know, had, so like, he had to get permission. Yeah, yes. exactly. So you're lying. Mm -hmm. And see, like we always say that, well, you know, sometimes you hear people say that it's a mistake when they say uh, the devil don't come before the Lord and can't be before God. Which we know is not true because it's in Revelation, it's in Job. He just spoke of the devil, the Satan go through it, to and through. Before. He go up, he go up and down, up and down, up and down from God to, to, uh, to uh, on earth, and he's allowed to do that. But it doesn't mean that God is interacting with him. You know, God is mingling with him. He is friend, his buddy. He, no. he allows him to come in the presence, and at some point in time, it won't be allowed. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It will going to be dismissed. It's going to yeah. be diminished. Over. But yeah. at the same time, so when you were seeing those uh, angels, yeah, they were fallen angels. They were up there saying, "Hey, I know, I know, <laughs> I want to be part of those, uh, uh, those liars and those four hundred prophets." You know, just for, you know, and God allowed it. Amen. And now that was happening in the spiritual realm. And it's amazing how I say, uh, uh, you know, we said uh, not against, but against our principalities. Yeah, we wrestle not against yeah. flesh and blood, but, but against principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked in high places, yeah. It's principalities. So, yes. uh, and then, I, I, like you said, passing right here where it says Job 1 and 6, it said, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come from? So they let you know right there that Satan does go in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So yeah, fallen angels. They were willing to lie. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I couldn't go in jail though. Say it again. I don't think I couldn't go in jail. In Job? You know, communion. Oh, body. they couldn't mess with. They could mess oh, with his body. Yeah, they couldn't get inside. No, they can't get inside. Yeah. You know, they can't possess him. Yeah. You know, they can't possess him. Yeah, because God told them what they could do. Yeah. He told them yeah. what you yeah. can do, what you can't do, and that was it. Yeah, that was it. He still do that today. Exactly. Still do what you can do, what you can't. do. What you can't do. Exactly. And sometimes, like like you just said, He allows them to do it in order to get us back on the get us straighten us up. Mm -hmm. so, well, I'm gonna let you do this, but don't don't kill him. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with his finance, but you can do this. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to understand. Yes, because yeah. our struggles make us better. Sometimes, yeah. you know, it's supposed to be. I'm talking about uh, the believers. Yes, mm -hmm. it should make us better. We should uh, uh, learn from those things. All right. But yep. I just said, let's not be mistaken that Satan can't go and be in the presence of God. Yeah, he can go back and forth. He can go back and forth. Because first of all, like. Um, I think it was uh, Adrian Rogers, uh, Chuck Swindoll. One of them said that God is not just God up in heaven. God is God. Yes. So, you know, Satan is here, but God is here. You know, yes. God is everywhere. So God can tell you, he doesn't have to go way up there to say, God can say right here, no, you can do this, you can do that. Because God is everywhere. Yes. He's everywhere. So, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I, I like that, y'all. Okay, who's going to, Dr. Jake, can you finish uh, 24 to 28? I should have real Sister Ryan wanted to read. Oh, she, I'm going to let her read the last part. Yeah. But I want to say right here, it says Revelation 12 and 10. It says right here, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of, of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brother, brethren who accuses them before our God day and night has been cast down. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see Satan all up and down, up in heaven, mm -hmm. coming back mm -hmm. and forth, doing this. Evil yes, so being used, used by God. Yeah, exactly at the end, I passed Yes. Beginning and end. All right. Dr. J, just finish 24 through 28. Finish at that oh, okay. part. Okay. okay. Now she's going to read the rest of it. Okay. Okay. So she's going to come back with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now uh, uh, Zacchaeus, the son of Zenaniah, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way did the spirit from the Lord go from me to speak to you? And Micaiah said, Indeed, you shall see on the day when you go into the inner chambers to hide. So the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and 
returned him to Amon, to Amon, the governor of the city, to the to Josh, Josh, the son, the king's son, and say, Thus said the Lord, put this fellow in prison. See there, no, that's where I saw it. Put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread and affliction and water of affliction until I come in peace. Oh my God. But Micaiah said, if you ever return in peace, the Lord has not <laughs> spoken by me. And he said, take heed all you people. Hey Amen. All right. Whoa. So I come in peace. No, <laughs> Micaiah, I like, I like his answer. He said, uh, if you come in peace, then the Lord ain't really spoke to me. In other words, you ain't coming in peace because the Lord did speak to me. You know, that was really good. Boy, that was... Hmm. All right. And Anybody? Before that, before that explanation, Mark, that was in Yes. Because that man's a business. Now, take <laughs> heed, all you people. Bam! Yeah. Then Micaiah said, Take heed, all you people. Yeah. 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 Take heed, all you people. It says, but Micaiah replied, if you return safely, it will mean that the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added and, uh, to those standing around, everyone mark my words. The way he answered, he ended that. Yeah, everyone mark, mark my words. Anybody else want to add anything to that? He said it. He said yeah, it. <laughs> you can't, yeah, mic drop. He said it all right there. Yeah, nothing to that. Amen. Indeed, he was using strong word, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I tell you, bold prophet. All right, the next section, uh, Sister Ronnie, you're going to read this. It's titled, The Death of Ahab. Oh, wow. uh, Ahab killed at Ramoth Gilead. So read 29 through uh, 40. Okay. So King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me. But you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. Meanwhile, the king of Aram had issued these orders to his 32 chariot commanders. Attack only the king of Israel. Don't bother with anyone else. So when the Armenian chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robe, they went after him. There is the king of Israel, they shouted. But when Jehoshaphat called out, the chariot commanders realized he was not the king of Israel, and they stopped chasing him. Saber. The Armenian soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops and hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Turn the horses and get me out of here, Ahab groaned to the driver of his chariot. I'm badly wounded. The battle raged all that day, and the king remained propped up in his chariot facing the Armenians. The blood from his wound ran down to the floor of his chariot. And as evening, as evening arrived, he died. Just as the sun was setting, a cry ran through his troops. We're done for. Run for your lives. So the king died, and his body was taken to Samaria and buried there. Then his chariot was washed beside the pool of Samaria, and dogs came and licked his blood at the place where the prostitutes bathed, just as the Lord had promised the rest of the events in Ahab's reign and everything he did, including the story of the ivory palace and the towns he built, are recorded in the book of history. In the book of history of the kings of Israel, so Ahab died, and his son Ahaziah mm -hmm. became the next king. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all, you didn't see the prophecy in verse 38. It said how what was going to happen to happen to Ahab's. Uh, descendants, or what's going to happen to Ahab, how he was going to die, and it says the dogs were going to come and lick up his blood, uh, uh, lick his blood where the prostitutes bathed, and then it talked a little bit about uh, the rest of his descendants, if they died out in the wilderness, that the vultures, the birds were going to come and tear uh, apart their bodies and eat their bodies, something to that, that nature, but this, this was already prophesied after Nabal, after he took Nabal's land in the last chapter, Elijah said, this is what's going to happen to you yeah. because you've done this wrong. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody else? Yeah, I want to go back to uh, when we were talking about Micaiah, Micaiah because he's just really talking boldly, and he goes back to, my Bible tells me to go back and refer to Deuteronomy 18, 22, 22. And it's really good. It's kind of referring back to what we've already spoken, but I'm going to read it according to what the, the word of the Lord says. Mm -hmm. It says, Deuteronomy 18, start with verse 20. It said, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that's a little god, that, that, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word 
words which the Lord has not spoken, 22, verse 22 says, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, it is the, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. Mm -hmm. I like that. That was really good. That was real good. I'm, good. Glad you read, I'm glad you read that one. That's what was saying. Yes. I mean, Micaiah. That is that was good. That was good. And he said it was bold. Mm -hmm. Okay, I go. My goodness. Like, this is some drama here. I'm telling y'all, this was it's this like, chapter was full. It was like a good. boy. Yeah, like a, dr a yeah, drama. Yeah, really I'm was. Like, yes. I'm like, a really good movie. Boy, I'm telling you, boy, this was good. The Bible. Amen. Anybody else, Pastor? Bunch? Yeah, I was looking at this here, and that, that lets me know we we are children of God. God is always protecting. You see that? Uh, see, let me start at 32. Mm -hmm. So when when the what is that? So when the uh, what that? Army? You said 32. Verse 32. Yeah, Aramean. Aramean chariot commanded us, saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robe. They went after him. There is the king of Israel, they shouted. But when Jehoshaphat called out, the chariot commander realized he was not the king of Israel, and they stopped chasing him. Yes. See, now he was a king, mm -hmm. but then God was protecting him. Amen. Because, but they went after, after Ahab. So I, I look at that as, as God was behaving because if they didn't really realize, they could have killed him. Look how he was dressed. Yes. In his royal robes. And uh, that's how we're supposed, not not just talking about the clothes we wear, but the way that we act. Exactly. You know, our, yeah. and, and they see us the way they see us. Oh, that's the child of God. That must be. There's something about it, something peculiar about that person. But then Ahab put on, he, he put on lies. He disguised himself as something he really wasn't anyway. So when we out there and we're disguising ourselves or putting on lies or acting a certain way, then yeah, we're going to stick out like a sore thumb. They're going to find out who the enemy is. They're going to find out who you really are. Mm -hmm. But we have to make sure we're dressed and clothed in righteousness. Right. Mm -hmm. The way that we dress. Uh -huh. Amen. Well, clothed in righteousness. set the other one up, the other king up, by telling him to wear his robes and he didn't. And backfired. Yeah, backfired. Backfired. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lena? Yes. Mm -hmm. I like what, I just said, uh, expound off of what Dr. Darlene's uh, read. What, what verse was that? That was uh, Deuteronomy 18, 22. 22. Oh, that's like when, the, the, one, the part that said if if it well, did not come from the Lord, mm -hmm. if, if it didn't come come to pass, it didn't come from the Lord. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I when I hear a prophecy, I write it down. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I just you know, it's it's important for us to pray over it and everything too. Mm -hmm. But you know, if it doesn't come to pass. It may not necessarily be from the Lord, but yes. again, I mean, there's other. I mean, we still have to continue to pray because it could be, you know, Satan hears the prophecy too, you know, and he could mm -hmm. be an hindrance. But and I um. Go ahead. Well, I like the way I, I, I you know, I said That's you good. said verse twenty two, but what you said up there in verse twenty, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Say that, say that. Boy, that was stiff. Boy, I'm telling you, don't be messing around with God's word. Talking about I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet, and sitting out there prophet lying instead of prophesying. No, I mean, just some of the things that you're going to have. It's dangerous. What are you about to say that I just about to say? Go ahead. It ain't came to pass. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just very careful. I write down everything that is. And what she said earlier, I don't, uh, Ophelia or uh, uh, Jolene said, one of them said it. Uh, um, people always want to hear a prophecy yeah, about yeah. just good things. Good things. You know, yeah. uh, they don't want to hear the truth oh, thing, yeah. but they want to hear, oh, you're going to hear the car. You're going to do this. You're going to do They want to hear that part, but they don't want to hear when God says, no, you, what you're doing is wrong. Yeah, right. This, you need to change your life or something like that. They don't want to hear that part because yeah. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear what I'm going to get. Yeah, I want yeah. money. Yeah. You know, I want a car. I want, you know, this, yeah. you know. People pleasers. Yeah. Like, yeah. People pleasers. You got the prophets who want to be people pleasers because that's what they want to hear. That's but right. you know another thing too, Pastor, I believe that when some prophets say to you that they're feeling that thus said the Lord, you go, uh, uh, God wants you to, uh, go, I see a house in your future. Mm -hmm. God, is, uh, God is telling me to tell you that you are going to get a house. Because it, and it goes back to, you know, the efforts that you say. The mm -hmm. efforts are good. Yeah. So we're going to look at the good efforts. So if somebody's prophesying and saying that God is saying that you are going to get a house, it doesn't mean that you sit back and wait for this house to fall in your lap. Yeah. What it's saying is that God is saying that, that he has a house out there for you. Go look but for that it. Means, that you got to go. out there and look for it. You That's, know what I'm saying? Maybe you preach it. Uh -huh. Okay, go on. You got to do something. Mm -hmm. You got to go and make it happen. So in other words, some of those things that you hear that are prophesied to you, and they're saying God said that a house is coming your way, and however they word it. But at the end of the day, it means that we have to do something. Mm -hmm. 
from the time we come up out of our, our, out of our mama's womb and we grow up in little Tyler, we're reaching. So that means that we need to continue to reach yes. and go out and, like you said, do something. I, I, Sunday, I kept quoting uh, your, your sermon, even at the table. Everything seemed to refer to it. It's, it's been pretty, I mean, because it was so applicable. But uh, at the end of the day, yeah, people want to hear the bad and they want to hear, uh, they don't want to hear the bad, they want to hear all the good. But some of the bad is you're going to have to get up off your butt and yes. for some people who are lazy. You're going to have to get up off your butt and go do something. I have people, who, and you know, in my family, like I said, used to get irritated with me because they felt like I had things. Well, who was sitting around when I was studying, you know, Working uh, hard. the 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 the, the, book, the uh, pharmacology book? Who was um, writing care plans, couldn't go to the party? Who was there mm-hmm. when I was spending years and Sacrifice. years studying? Now you want to get mad and say, I have this and that. No, I had to work for that. It wasn't just like, and it yeah. just happened. I had to do something. Do something. I had to look at the, that I'm right here, and in the middle of right here was the care plans and all these yeah. things for me to get Sit right there. there at that, oh, I don't pay attention. <laughs> I love sermons. Until you get right here. Now I'm the nurse and I'm able to make, but at the same time I had God had this young lady tell me, don't spin it all. A lot of people are where they're at because they spin it all. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful. Now, I'm not saying that Stewart. I'm down on people that are not good stewards. And it's in the word. And one thing Stewart. I want to say too, Pastor, this is so delicious. This is very delectable. Mm-hmm. It's yes. very good. Yes. This is good, good stuff. I'm it's telling like, you, y'all. I mean, it's better than any program that I've watched in a, a, a one month. And then you get right here, it says Proverbs 13 and 20. It goes back to something you said earlier. And then it, it reads right here, Proverbs 13 and 20 says. Because you were saying it also on, on Sunday when you are talking about the little girl who was hanging around. She was a good girl, and then she started hanging around with other people, and she picked up their character. Mm-hmm. That wasn't really who she was in her heart, but she picked up those things, and she ended up doing those things. So you have to be careful who you surround yourself with. Okay. Proverbs 13 and 20 says, He... Who walks with wise men yes. will be wise, mm-hmm. but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Yes. So, and a lot of, and what I saw was this young sweet woman, a young girl, because I'm looking at my destiny. She has a really good heart. She mm-hmm. loves people, but sometimes she can get caught up with some things. You know what I'm saying? And she looks at the heart of other people. She loves people because she's always greatly concerned about pastors. She always come tell me <laughs> something about, oh, I can give him all that to do, and so on and so forth. So she loves her pastor. So at the end of the day, is what I'm saying is we as people, we have to be careful about who we surround ourselves with. And when you spoke of that little girl, I saw my my little grandbaby, mm-hmm. you know, can possibly get caught up with somebody or being caught up with yes, somebody. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I heard the, 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 the cry and the plea of a mother when Aaliyah was saying that, you know, my kids or kids here, they go to church all the time. But please pray for them. She was yes. pleading. I felt her heart. Yes, yes. You know, you know, like yeah. continue to pray uh-huh. for the kids because you know, they, just because they're in church don't mean they can't go astray. Come just on. because they're in church don't mean they can't get involved in something wrong. Yeah. And I remember turning around looking at her and saying, yeah, we as, an adult, as adults, we get in trouble, so but we good. know the word. Mm-hmm. And we study and preaching and teaching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I stay repentant. Yeah, no. that's good. That's I'm good. A pro- I'm a process. You know, I got somebody prophesied to me. And also to, to me, your own self, the, your own self know yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, <coughs> you know, you know what the Lord are telling you, and you put, you put, you know yourself. And this lady, I went to this church. I was looking for a church to go to. And this lady, she go to everybody, but any time she was coming to me, she always back back. Mm-hmm. So finally, she come to me. But I was looking at her, and I was seeing what was on her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she don't know I can see the spirits. I was seeing what was on her. And she's telling these people all kind of stuff to run, you got this, and all kind of different things. Yeah. And when she come to me to prophesy, you know what she told me? The Lord told her, I must get lemon and wash my face with lemon. Oh. And I said, what's going on with my face? I don't got a bunch of bump or something <laughs> on my face. Yeah. <laughs> but she told me I'm going to go and wash my face with lemon. I came home and told my husband that. My that was not a prophecy. No. <laughs> I was <laughs> with lemon. She, look, she couldn't face me. I already see what was on her, but she don't know. She, she did just. Uh, and then I went back again to the service. And the lady, the lady uh, come to me. She said, she said, I want you to pray for me. Mm-hmm. 
you to pray for me. And she's a prophet. And she says, no, I want, she called me to pray for, to, she was about to pray for me. But she said, no. You to pray for? Me to pray for her. her. Okay. And I said, oh, okay. You know, Man. but then I told her, then she want me to part of her church. She want me to come part of her church. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. She sent people to call me and everything. Somebody who I know me, you know, where I live and everything. And and I told her, I said, that lady, you got prophesied in there and tell me what to go and wash my face with lemon. I said, I see a bunch of spirit of her. Mm. And what she was telling the people then, I was in it, but she couldn't face me. Finally, she come to me, and that's what she prophesied to me. I'm a good lemon, and wash my face. So I used to ride the bus, the bus. So I, in the bus, was talking to somebody else about this. And then the lady, a whole lady said, you know something? In the old days, people used to wash their face with lemon mm -hmm. because they got all kind of bumper, you know, stuff mm -hmm. on their face. And I said, well, she talked side to me that, and I don't have no bunch of bumper on my face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the bus driver, everybody get into the conversation and start to laughing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow, y'all, this is really rich. I'm going to go ahead and finish up. I'm going to do this last part really quick, and we can talk about it next week. If there's okay. anything, but the most of this here is just about generational things. Uh, different kings is coming after that. Uh, Jehoshaphat rules in Judah. Verse 41, it says, Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to rule over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab's reign in Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother was Azuba, the daughter of Shili. Jehoshaphat was a good king. Following the example of his father, Asa. Do you remember Asa? He was one of the youngest kings to ever be uh, uh, reigned as king. He was like seven years old or something like that. I think he was younger. He was the youngest. He was seven and somebody else was eight, I believe. But we can look at it. We looked it up. Uh, he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines. I think Pastor Weston, we was talking about that, yeah. removing different things. Uh, the pagan shrines. You pray for things. You want this and that, want that, but you don't remove those things that's not supposed to be there. Uh, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. The rest of the events of Jehoshaphat's reign, the extent of his power and the wars he waged are recorded in the, in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He banished from the land the rest of the male and female shrine prostitutes who still continued their practices from the days of his father Asia. There was no king in Edom at that time, only a deputy. Jehoshaphat also built a fleet of trading ships to sell to Ophir for gold. But the ships never set sail, for they met with disaster in their home port of Izion Geber. At one time, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, had prophesied to Jehoshaphat, Let my men sail with your men in the ships. But Jehoshaphat refused the request. When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram became the next king. Ahaziah rules in Israel. Ahaziah, son of Ahab, began to rule over Israel in the 17th year of Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria two years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight, following the example of his father and mother and the example of Jer Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had led, him, who had led Israel to sin. He served Baal and worshipped him, provoking the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, just as his father had done. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we just finished um, 2 Kings. Amen. No, 1 Kings. That was the last chapter, y'all. Yeah. Last chapter of 1 Kings. We're going to move into 2 Kings on next week. Amen. And um, as I said, Pastor Wesley, I can do next week. Our, our game is Monday, not Tuesday. But after that, it's going to be every Tuesday for the next three months. So I probably will miss uh, Bible study for the next three months. Uh, yeah, but it's going to continue to go, and I thank God that we are able to record our Bible studies. Amen. 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 Anybody else have anything else? This was really good. It was excellent, y'all. I'm telling you, I thank God for uh, the Holy Spirit moving and giving us understanding and allowing us to, to uh, partake in the lesson. Amen. Everyone had a part in it and had something to add to it. That's the Holy Spirit moving. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yes. In the lesson, it, it talked about things yeah. in the spirit realm, and it made it even 
more, I guess, uh, applicable to what we're doing today. What we're doing today. This was in the Holy. This was in the spirit realm also. A lot of things were happening in here in the spirit realm. You know, Pastor, I got. Uh, I went with a girl from Chicago. She was from Chicago. Uh, Africa, some part in Africa, and I went with her to a church. She took me many times. She took me, and this prophecy, this this guy was a pro prophecy, you no, know? mm -hmm. and he prophesied to me because I was not too much. I used to go to church sometimes, but I never know much about no bunch of stuff in the church and anything like that. And everything that God prophesied to me. That's what I used to do. My Lord. Yeah, I believe that, y'all. I mean, this guy in some, I don't know where, what state did he come from. I don't remember. But everything, what he told me, he told me the Lord was going to use me powerful. And, you know, he told me a lot of stuff. And everything he told me, it came true. Sometimes it, it took a long time. When Elena and Trey and Fenicia were really, really little, we were at Progressive Church, and some, I don't remember who that was, that came and prophesied over the three of them <laughs> that this is what their life was going to be like when they got older, and exactly what's happening right now is exactly what, what uh, this, this man said. I think it was a man. I believe it was. But it's exactly what, I don't know if you remember that. It was at Progressive. Yeah, it, it was something else, but it, it's exactly the way that their lifestyles are right now, you know. But I thank God that they're all in the church, you know. Yeah, they're all still in the yeah. church, and they're bringing their kids up in the church. So uh, we thank God for that. Okay, y'all, we're going to go ahead and just uh, have our benediction. Man, if yeah, everyone would stand. That's all you said and made it clear to me, Dr. J, um, about, you know, with the prophecy and everything. Because sometimes, I mean, there are false, you know, there's, there are false Many. prophets and we have to continue to pray over our mm -hmm. prophecies, but you are right. You know, come to pass and it may be Yes, because look on line. Fifty years down the line, it may not happen. It may not be right away. And if you're yeah. disobedient, you're missing out on it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So because we have to pray it for all of it to be. Yeah. You know, the whole thing. Because look on line. It's not for me. Not yeah. I'm not believing. I'm not going to tell you something could possibly happen if you don't believe it. If you got to go do something. That's right. You miss it. You said you got to get up and go do something. Oh, you sure do. Yeah. Amen. All right, y'all. Everyone's there. I appreciate yeah. the life yeah. applications too, because I'm gonna be honest. These little stories right here. Sometimes I'm like, it's just a whole bunch. Sometimes all the time. The spirit that works through all of That's them right. to bring it applicable and make it understandable. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> revealing. So revealing. <laughs> Amen, y'all. Let's go ahead, close it up. Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Father God, once again for this, this powerful Bible study, Father God. We thank you for moving on thank everyone you, in this place, Father God, and revealing so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are continuing to give us uh, understanding of your word, Father God. And this evening, Father, it was just made just visually almost, Father. Uh, we can see just different things in the Spirit as you were giving us understanding of this lesson on this evening. We thank you for all the testimonies and different things that's yes, happened, Lord. Father, that even made this even more understandable. Uh, what we're reading, Father God. We thank you for those that were here this evening. And uh, for those that were not able to make it, Father God, we are praying, Master, that the word goes forth. Thank you that uh, Pastor West is here recording and, and having it on social media, that the word goes forth, Master, to touch, Father God, and that it's received on fertile ground. Father, some were not here because they were sick. We're praying for uh, Minister Tyrone, Father God, that uh, you would heal his body, Father God, and for yes. anyone else that may have been sick, yes. Father God. There's many of us have been experiencing little colds or little different things like yes. that, Father God. We're yes. praying for the healing power to come on down. And we realize that that is in the spirit realm also, yes. Father God. So we just want to say thank you. And Father God, thank you for this offering that we received, Father God. It may be used in the manner in which it was given, Father God, to help somebody. Father God, and for kingdom building, we just want to say thank you, Father God, once again for all that you're doing in these Bible studies, Father God. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And now as we leave this place, we'll never leave your sight. We'll be so careful to give your name to praise. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.